Hi, I'm Matt Needham, and this is my lecture on HVACR electrical symbols. Let's dive right in and start with some common electrical load symbols. This is a condenser fan motor. This is a compressor. This is an evaporator fan motor. This is a contactor coil. This is an indoor fan motor. This is an indoor fan relay. This is a defrost timer motor. This is a hot gas solenoid. This is a reversing valve solenoid. This is a gas valve. This is a light. This is a heater. This is a defrost heater. Crank case heater. This is a solenoid coil. Also sim symbol for magnetism. This is a cooling thermostat or a makes on rise thermostat. This is a heating thermostat or makes on a fall in temperature. This is a limit switch. This is a time delay that makes with time. This is a humidistat that makes on a fall in humidity. This is a high pressure cutout. This is a low pressure cut out. This is a humidistat that makes on a rise in humidity. This is a flow switch that makes with flow. This is a single pole, single throw switch or set of contacts. This is double pole, single throw. This is triple pole, single throw. This is single pole double throw, and this is double pole double throw. This is a thermal overload. This is a pilot duty thermal overload. This is a pilot duty magnetic overload. This is a capacitor. This is a transformer. This is a fuse. This is a thermal couple. And back around again. Now let's take a moment and look here at the whiteboard to understand some of the basics of electrical schematic symbols. For electrical loads, our most common basic symbol is just a circle. And then um, we can put the letters to abbreviate for the electrical load in here, like I can put a C for contactor coil, okay? So the abbreviation goes in the circle to kind of let you know what it is. Also, we have contacts here, and this is like single pole, single throw. And let me give you a tip about that. The number of dots coming in is the pole. And the number of dots going out is the throw per pole, per pole. We'll, we'll go over that. Single pole, single throw. Also something to be aware of is that quite often the symbols resemble the actual part. Now this is a flow switch and when used for like air, it's referred to as a sail switch. And you see how it kind of looks like a sail and when a fan blows, then this would close an electrical set of contacts sending a electrical signal down the line. Likewise, this is a heating thermostat and this is representing a bimetal, brass and steel together. And when it gets cold, it contracts. So when it gets too cold, it contracts. And when something gets too cold, we close the heating thermostat and we bring on heat to warm it up. Likewise, over here with a cooling thermostat, you have that bimetal symbol, and when it gets too warm, 
and this expands and you heat up, you close the contact and send energy from the cooling thermostat down to something like an electrical load like our contactor coil. And generally speaking, the switches, the contacts, the thermostats, the humidistats, the um, flow switches and all of these things, the, the switches or the contacts that close are generally drawn on the left side of the diagram and then our electrical loads like a contactor coil or this could even just be a commercial refrigeration unit off of a thermostat with a compressor in there, something like that is on the right hand side. Now that we kind of figured out the basics of it, and I also like to just start off by going through the flashcards quickly so that you can just go and watch the first three minutes of this video is over and over to learn them. But then the longer uh, version, which we're doing in the second half now, I go over more detail so you can really understand what this is all about. So again, the circle here for CFM condenser fan motor, and the circle again is really used a lot for coils and for motors. And then you put the abbreviation in the center and the condenser fan motor gets rid of the heat. Um, and also we have here comp for compressor, right? Our major load in air conditioning and refrigeration, the refrigeration air conditioning compressor. And then we have the evaporator fan motor that blows the cold air into whatever uh, we're trying to cool down, evaporator fan motor. And then contactor coil. So your contactor coil here is a load. And when you had the contactor coil right here, and it's C, when you energize this, if on the other part of your schematic, you have a C, that means that when you energize this coil, this contact closes, okay? It's drawn in the normal position. All of the symbols are drawn as they normally are in the system. Generally, that means the off position, but in some cases, like a high pressure cutout, that means that um, it's, uh, it is closed. But I mean, if you were to have that part on a bench, it wouldn't be closed um, because it didn't have pressure on it. Now, let's continue on. We said contactor coil, indoor fan motor, which is going to be for air conditioning, not uh, refrigeration, similar to an evaporator fan motor. Uh, indoor fan relay that can make or break a set of contacts. And here's a defrost timer motor that would close a set of contacts, open sets of contacts, and keep the time for like a freezer. This is a hot gas solenoid valve that will generally let refrigerant pass from the high side to the low side, used in harvest on ice makers, capacity control, um, and head pressure regulation. This is a reversing valve solenoid that is utilized exclusively in a heat pump to cause the refrigerant to go in the opposite direction so that we can get some heating out of the refrigerant in the winter time. This is a gas valve that will open up on a call for heat, like right here, a gas valve might be down the road here, and when it gets cold, it closes, brings on the gas valve, we burn natural gas mixed with air, we provide heating. This is a light, and it has an L in it, and if it's a certain color, like, like, like a red light, it would have an R in there or a green light, it would have a G in there, okay? And we do have a lot of circuit boards and things like that with indicator lights that give us information. This is the general um, symbol for a heater, okay? Heaters have resistance in there and you're showing that resistance here, the way this is drawn. And then if it's specifically a heater, like a defrost heater to melt ice in uh, refrigeration evaporators, it would have like DH for defrost heater, or in air conditioning to warm the oil when the compressor's off, a crankcase heater at the bottom of your compressor. This is a solenoid coil, also a symbol for magnetism. Sometimes like this um, could be in place of the C, uh, because really that's what the contactor coil is, is, is a coil of magnetism that will then energize 
and close a contact. But for liquid line solenoids, hot gas solenoids, also things like this, and we're going to see also for the magnetic overload how we're using this magnetic symbol. Okay. This is again a cooling thermostat. We went over that and a heating thermostat that makes on a temperature drop. This is a limit switch normally closed, found generally on furnaces and things. It's going to be closed for its whole life and it will open up if the furnace gets too hot as a safety. Okay, and that would pop open killing power to the furnace so that we don't have a fire or meltdown or something like that. This kind of looks like a thermostat. This is a time delay, makes with time. So you get an input power, and then after a period of time, depending on how it's dialed in, 30 seconds, five minutes, this contact would close and then pass the power to let something else be energized. Time delay makes with time, okay? This is a humidistat that would make on a drop in humidity in order to probably boil off some water to get the huge humidity into the proper zone, quite often used in server rooms to prevent low humidity and static electricity from damaging electronics. This is a high pressure cutout. Again, it's gonna be closed the whole time it's in the circuit. If the pressure on the high side gets too high, it's gonna open up. And again, this looks like a diaphragm because that's what it is. And the refrigerant pressure comes in here and if it gets too high, it pops this up on the high side, killing power. Likewise, this is drawn beneath the line and is a low pressure cutout. And if the pressure on the low side of the system, like on the suction line, gets too low, this would open up um, and stop the system from uh, more damage. Generally, the most common reason would be low refrigerant charge that this would open up. The most common reason. And again, this is a humidistat that would make on a rise in humidity. A lot of times when we run cooling and the evaporator will have a condensate and water is taken out of the air. So sometimes we have to use a humidistat in order to dehumidify the air and this would make on a rise in humidity. Again, this is a flow switch. It's also known as a paddle switch um, and a sail switch because it, it makes a flow of fluid. When we say fluid, we can mean vapor or liquid. So uh, when we talked here, it was about the air, okay? Airflow, you have a fan running, we verify that, this closes, it gets lifted up, makes with flow, right? But with like a pump, like a chilled water pump, quite often when we energize chillers, we turn on that chilled water pump and then a paddle is made which is the same symbol as this, and you have flow, makes with flow, and then we're allowed to bring on the uh, compressor to make chilled water, okay? So a flow switch makes with flow, either sail or paddle switch is used, okay? Now, going to our contacts, this again is a single pull, single throw um, switch, and it can be a set of contacts or it can be a manual switch drawn like this. These two are essentially the same, okay? single pull, single throw. And then likewise, we have here, double pull, single throw. Remember, the pull means two inputs, each only having one output. So double pull, single throw. And here, we have two inputs, each only having one dot or one output. Likewise, this is triple pull, single throw, contacts and manual switch. Like this might be a disconnect. When you throw one, all three are made or break uh, on a big disconnect would be drawn like this to kill three phase power, okay? And then this is your single pull, double throw, one input each having two possible outputs, okay? Um, and then this finally is your double pull, double throw um, contacts and switch configuration, okay? Um, now this is just a thermal overload. Generally, you'll find this a lot on small compressors where if the compressor pulls too much amperage and gets too hot, this little guy will heat up and pop up this little bimetal or snap disc and kill power to the compressor before the compressor gets killed. Okay. And then this is a pilot duty thermal overload where this heater 
this these two little hooks that go together are in line with the compressor and if the compressor pulls too much amperage too much energy goes through these heaters this generates a certain amount of heat and opens up this contact, which is in a sense is really a heating thermostat, a limit switch that would open on a rise in temperature and then kill power to like a contactor coil in order to shut off the contacts that feed power to the compressor. Okay. Likewise, same with this. This is a magnetic overload, a faster acting overload than that thermal overload. And um, this is in line with the actual amperage of the compressor, and if it pulls too much energy, then this contact would open up um, and kill power to like a contact or a, mag, or a mag starter and kill power going to um, the compressor uh, windings. This is just a symbol for a capacitor. Now, these are some things um, here that aren't really switches, and they're not really... Uh, loads they're kind of something in between uh, a capacitor this is a transformer this is a fuse and uh, the fuse uh, I'll go back for a second the transformer changes one voltage into another and the fuse is a safety that makes or breaks uh, I'm no that, that will op burn open permanently if you have too much amperage and then this is a thermal couple that proves a standing pilot on things like hot water heaters or old wall furnaces or something like that that proves you've got that baby little flame there so that the gas valve can open safely and we can ignite the flame where we want to ignite it with the burners and this is the thermocouple that proves that standing pilot okay and back around again and that ends my lecture on uh, electrical symbols